Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Twit Specials is provided by Cashfly. At C A C H E F L Y dot com. Three, two, one. This is Twit Special number 187, recorded New Year's Eve. Brian Brushwood's Bizarre Magic. Three, two, one. Hey! Are oh, you ready for Here. some magic? We've got yeah. magic to do. <laughs> now, now, but first I gotta say to Brian, Brian Brushwood, of course, is here, and I, people know Brian from NSFW, from Frame Rate, so, so many great shows. By the way, congratulations on launching the Cord Killers. Oh yeah, thank congratulations. you very much. Congratulations, that's gonna be an awesome show. But he also is a professional magician. That's my. Uh, that's your real profession. That's my secret day that's job. That's your day yeah. job. Yeah, that's yeah, no yeah. secret. You've toured how many colleges? Uh, we've done uh, like 2,000 college shows. I headlined three times at Universal. Like this is Great. this is. It's funny because everybody knows me for being a total jackass on NSFW, but with any luck, you should see a lot of polish here. It should be a lot of fun. Uh, one one thing we're going to do a little bit different from all of the other shows is if we can get some in studio monitors, make it feel a little more like a live event. Uh, and if we can, I'm going to lean over and see if Chad gives me the thumbs up here. Yeah, I can share with up. you. Okay. Yeah. We're going to start things off with uh, what some people argue is the finest magic performance I ever gave. We have special archival video of this. Let's go ahead and let's switch over to this, Chad. Let's take a look. I'm dying to see this. (laughs) (laughs) Riveting so far, uh, I got to say. The Great Magician Show. Is this you? The Magician. I can make Ready? Wow. Yay! My goodness. Is this car? No. 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 Despite his rocky beginnings with the art, Brian Brushwood did rekindle his interest in magic once at college. (coughs) Brian has toured both solo and with major concert series and has appeared on dozens of TV and radio programs around the world. He's been awarded Best Club Magic, Best Comedy Magic, Best Stage Magic, and Brian was nationally awarded Variety Entertainer of the Year. Ladies and gentlemen, Please welcome the bizarre magic of Brian Brushwood. All right, right, folks, my name is Brian Brushwood, and we're going to start off with a little bit of, uh, I don't know, I guess history that I'm sure you all learned about back in high school. Let's go ahead and kill these lights because we're going to take a tour of the history of fire eating. Now, the concept of resistance to fire is one as old as history itself. As far back as the ancient Greek tragedy Medea, references are made to holding a bar of red hot iron in one's hands in order to prove innocence or sincerity. (laughs) That was the right response. (laughs) The first written account of a fire eater, however, occurs in 1607, when Sir Henry Wotton wrote of an English sailor who upon returning from the East Indies possessed the secret to eating fire as though it were candy. With that in mind, I'm going to show you guys the simplest method to extinguish a torch with one's mouth. (laughs) Thank you very much. (laughs) Some of you are clapping. That's awesome. It is more impressive. It looks more like this. Here we go. There we go. Now, the first commercially successful fire eating act went on tour during the 1680s was performed by a French man who was renowned not only for his ability to swallow flame but also for the apparent affinity he would display for it in fact people I love this kid in fact people claimed that his teeth and gums were so calloused he could actually hold burning torches between them just like so at which point his audiences went freaking nuts it was awesome Oh, 
much better. By the 1800s, we come to a time that some people call the golden age of fire eaters. This is a time when the focus of fire eating shifted away from the tolerance of the heat and the flame and instead moved towards the artistry and the skill with which one manipulated them. All right, this is the, hang on, this is the hardest move I know, see? There we go. Now, by the 1920s, the popularity of fire eaters had taken a nosedive. In fact, Harry Houdini, of all people, he called fire eating an art over which oblivion threatens to stretch her darkening wings. This is when fire eaters were kicked out of the theaters and out into the streets, where in order to draw bigger crowds, they began performing increasingly dangerous stunts like the tongue transfer. Or perhaps eating twice the flame at once. It's a lot of fire. <laughs> All right, here we go. I'm going to conclude this demonstration by showing you guys the single most difficult and dangerous fire eating stunt. This one's called the human candle. There we go. You guys, you guys want to see one more? Yeah. You guys are like, kill yourself. <laughs> A while ago, I wrote this book on fire eating, and when I did, I discovered a combination of feats that's become my favorite thing to show people. Check this out. Whoa. There we go. <laughs> All right, folks. At this point, we need to make a decision. We can either do some traditional magic or we can try some freaky stuff. What's it gonna be? Freaky! <laughs> How come everybody picks secret stuff? All right, here we go. We've got nine four and a half inch, 30 penny nails. Let me get you, buddy. Reach forward, choose any one of those for me. Go ahead and wiggle it out. Pull it out side to side. Hold it high above your head. You got it? Hold it high above your head and where everyone can see, I want you to try to bend that nail. Tell me, does that nail bend at all? Oh, of course not. Go ahead, push it in your, I mean, up through your palm. With just, make sure it doesn't collapse. It's not made of rubber, right? All right, here we go. We're going to grab that for me. Now, I want you to watch closely. No tricky nails, no switcheroos, none of that David Blaine BS. I'm going to show you guys a feat that dates back almost 100 years that was originally called the human blockhead. <laughs> I, love, I love this moment when everybody realizes where this is headed. <laughs> All right, now some people, some people think what you're about to see is just an illusion. But I want you to see that's actually going inside the maxillary sinus. Some people think that this is done with a trick nail. I give you my word of honor, I swear. It's not. That was a booger joke. Screw you guys. All right, I'm going to do the human blockhead. You guys freak out. Here we go. Here we go. Now, at this point, I do need a volunteer from the audience. This can be anyone, anyone in the entire crowd, anyone at all, anyone whatsoever. How about you? Come on up here. What was your name again? Oh, no. oh yes, Debbie. Come on up here. Let's hear for Debbie, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> now, Debbie, you have an extremely important job, Debbie, because I need you, Debbie to reach forward with your pinching fingers and grab just the tip of that nail. All right, that's very important, Debbie. On the count of three, I'm gonna start backing away. When I do, I want you to hold perfectly still as that nail pulls out of my face. You ready? Are you ready? One, two, three. Nice and easy there, Debbie. Keep going. Here you go, Debbie. Go, 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 Debbie. Go, 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 go. And that is a show of day for you, Debbie. Actually, keeping no, that's yours. Here, just tuck it in your. You know, that's you. You're, you're, you're gonna take it no matter what. All right. <laughs> 
So, what are you auctioning it off? What is this? So, I've got authentic brushwood DNA here, people. All right, guys. Here's the thing. Here's the thing, guys. Uh, and if I can, uh, Chad, I don't know if you can give me a little more monitor. That would be delightful because my voice is getting ragged out. Uh, here's the thing, guys. Is as long as I can remember, I've always wanted to do uh, weird, bizarre, freaky magic. But when I was a kid, I never had uh, any money. So I had to buy stuff at garage sales, which meant a lot of secondhand busted junk. But one day, I found the best trick ever at a garage sale. It was so old that the instructions for it actually came in film strip format. Now, most of us are too old to remember, or too young to remember film strip. But back in the 1950s, they had these 35 millimeter strips of film that you would advance by hand while they synchronized up with a record player. It would like beep when it was time to go on to the next frame, that kind of thing. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I had my brother run the film strip projector and I'm gonna recreate for you guys what it looked like when I was a kid trying to learn my first bizarre magic trick while I was learning it. So pretend I'm a kid, here we go. Is that playing? Probably not. Yep, no. Magic. What is magic? Magic is an ancient and mysterious art. Magic is also a fun, hilarious, and wacky way for you to entertain your parents. The Postman. Yes, even astronauts are amazed by magic. But how can you use magic to entertain all these people? The idiots, your new tongue trick. Yes, everything you need to perform this incredible illusion is included in the box. Start by selecting a volunteer from the audience and politely asking her to join you on stage. All right, let, let me get a girl to help me out, actually. Is there any girls who want to, That's very brave of you to volunteer other people next to you. Uh, actually, I, I prefer an adult girl. For, oh, no, it's... Uh, uh, let me get somebody who hasn't seen... Uh, wait, stop volunteering other people, assholes. Uh, that's... <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I need a girl. I'll even get. All right, screw you. Come, come on up here. Let's hear it for Will Harris. <laughs> let me, let me get you right over here. This will be fine. All right, we're gonna learn how to do a trick. Here we go. <laughs> Prove to her that yours is a normal tongue by having her carefully inspect it. Make sure there are no piercings. When your volunteer is confident that yours is a normal, unaltered tongue, you can move on to the next step. Look good? Perfect. <laughs> now reach into the box and pull out the long skewer. Just as she inspected your tongue, have your volunteer carefully examine your skewer. <laughs> Make sure it is completely unaltered and ungimmicked. When your volunteer is satisfied that there's nothing tricky about the skewer, you're ready to begin. Look good. To perform the incredible skewer through tongue trick, simply grab your tongue with your left hand, hold the skewer in your right, and stab the skewer directly through your tongue. That's right, stab the skewer directly through your tongue. At this point, your audience should be very amazed and offer you an enthusiastic ooh. But what the audience didn't see is that you never really stabbed the skewer through your tongue at all. You really switched the original skewer for the gimmicked one in the box. Aren't you clever? If by mistake you forgot to perform the switch and instead stab yourself with the original skewer, don't panic. Simply reach into the box and pull out the pair of emergency shears designed for just such an occasion. 
take those emergency shears, hold them up to the problem area, and simply cut it off. That's right, cut it off. Now let your audience know that you're A-OK -okay by smiling big and bowing to thunderous applause. couldn't have performed this illusion by yourself. So thank your volunteer by giving her the school. It will serve as the perfect reminder of how much fun you've had today. I'm so sorry, that was a technical malfunction. <laughs> Did, did I get all the, uh, uh, yeah, I'm good? Close enough? Yeah, hey, screw you. You don't have to look like this the rest of the show. Nah, that's fine. Let it be a reminder of this momentous evening. Hey, do me a favor, uh, Will, for being such a good sport, I'm going to give you a copy of the Scam School book. Uh, one more time, Will Harris, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> all right. Uh, all right, guys, here's the thing. We are now going to venture in a new direction. We're going to try an experiment in ESP, second sight psychic phenomena. Now, being an experiment, I can honestly say that I don't know how this is going to turn out. What I am going to do, however, is I'm going to come out among you guys and feel around for two individuals who strike me as being exceptionally psychic. So I'm coming out. I'm feeling for psychic vibrations. Nothing. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Feeling for psychic vibes, getting some powerful emanations. I want to say like a force bubble of energy right here. Yes, you, buddy. What is your name? Paul. Paul, let's hear it for Paul as he has up there on stage. <laughs> Let me get a friend for Paul. I'm feeling some powerful mojo from It's Got To Be. Yes, you, buddy. What is your name? Evan. Evan, let's hear it for Evan. Paul, let me get you on this side. Evan, we'll get you on this side. Now, Paul and Evan, before we get started here, I wanted to going in. I want to know going into this. Would you consider yourselves to be believers? Let's see if this is on. There we go. Can we turn this way? It's good. Okay, good. Would you consider yourself a? Whoa, where did? Oh, uh, Evan over here. Paul, uh, you're Paul, right? right. Perfect. Are right. you a believer or a non-believer in ESP, second sight, psychic phenomenon? Paul, believer. A believer, and Evan. I'll just keep doing that. <laughs> I knew you were going to do that. <laughs> so two believers? I'm open to it. Oh, an agnostic. Awesome. All right. So here's what. Yes, so we got father. one person who might believe and one who definitely does. It's actually very rare that I get two people uh, with no skeptics. So it'll be interesting to see how that affects our results. What we're going to do is try to establish a psychic connection between you two, which means we need to designate a psychic thought sender and a psychic thought receiver. If you don't mind, Paul, you'll be our psychic thought sender. Evan, you'll be our psychic thought receiver. Sound good so far? To make sure there's no way for you to cheat, Evan, and use your traditional five senses, I want you to plant your feet right back here, right over that little dot there, and turn around, face your audience, and uh, I need you to, uh, we're gonna cut you off from the outside world to make sure that there's no way for you to cheat, which means I need to know, before we go any farther, are you claustrophobic, sir? No, and at least it's not the ostrich. <laughs> good, okay, good, because I wanna make sure that some people get a little freaked out when I put them inside this uh, blindfold. I want you to face towards your audience, now nice and loud, Evan, so everyone in the room can hear. Can you see anything? No. That's very loud there, Evan. Good job. No! <laughs> now, the problem, Evan, with me being a magician is that some of the, the skeptics out there in the audience might think that that's some kind of tricky blindfold you can see right through. So we're going to cut you off from the outside world and place you into what scientists refer to as an isolation booth. All right? Now, don't worry. Nothing hurts. We're just going to cut you off like, there we go. <laughs> now, Evan. <laughs> while you're in the isolation booth. It's very important that you do not speak, but you can nod your head yes or no. Do you understand? Excellent. <laughs> now, if everything goes according to plan, Evan, in a moment, you should receive some kind of psychic image. Until then, don't worry about what I'm saying to Paul. You just wait to receive your psychic image. Make sense? Perfect. All right, now, Paul, in just a moment, you're going to project a psychic picture across this stage, through that isolation booth, and into Evan's mind. 
If you were to go with whatever image popped into your mind first up here on stage, you would have what scientists call a psychological predisposition to choose common objects like a house, a stick figure, a smiley face, that kind of thing, to help you come up with a unique image that nobody could have predicted. I've written upon these cards some general themes you're gonna use as inspiration when selecting your psychic image. Make sense? So I want you to reach forward with your right hand, extend one finger, touch the back of any one card, it doesn't matter which one. All right, I'll put that one on top. Now keep in mind, any one of these folks in the audience could be a spy working for Evan. So make sure you're the only one who reads the card. Don't let me see it, don't let the audience see it. Once you've read it, put it right back where you found it. Now when you read that card, did a picture pop into your mind? Whatever that image is, I want you to draw a simple version of it using this magic marker on this piece of poster board. I'm gonna turn it around so the audience can't see. Step on back here if you would. And I want you to uh, draw, actually I'm gonna put it all the way back here. There you go, you gotta hide it a little. I want you to draw nice and big, a simple version of it so that everyone can see. Start now. <laughs> Evan, have you received a psychic image? Okay, <laughs> Evan, I'm gonna put this marker in your left or your right hand. I want you to take the cap off of that marker. I'm gonna position this poster board right here in front of you so everyone can see it. And I want you to find the edges with your hand and nice and big, I want you to draw whatever image came to you, no matter how strange it may have seemed. Go ahead and start now. So it's obviously a very intense psychic image. <laughs> Are you finished over here? Let me grab that for me if you would. Let me get you to stand up to that microphone right there. And whatever you do, don't stop projecting that psychic image. Are, are, are you finished, Paul, Evan, you? Okay, okay. I'll grab, let me grab both of these. <laughs> Paul, Evan, I like it. Uh, all right, now, ladies and gentlemen, let's see what psychic image popped in. To, what the fuck? <laughs> popped in to, to Evan's mind. It's abstract. Uh, all right, now I'll tell you what, Paul, looking at what Evan drew, if this was a real e experiment, ESP experiment, considering what you were sending and what he drew, would you say he was right or he was wrong? I'd say he's getting close. You say he's close. Yeah. Let me get you to stand right over here next to, uh, next to Evan, if you would. Nice and loud, I want you to shout out to the audience what you were sending a picture of. A toothbrush. Wow. Wow. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I've done this experiment hundreds of times, and sometimes they're close, and sometimes not so much, but I'll be good goddamn if that doesn't look more like a toothbrush than this does right here. Let's have a huge round of applause for both of my volunteers. You guys did a fantastic job, ladies and gentlemen. There. Good job there, by the way, buddy. You did such a good job. This is your very own isolation booth. Thank you so much. One more time for my two psychics. There we go. We'll just get rid of all this crap. Thank you very much, Zach. There you go. Good job. Oh, I get it now. These, these are teeth and a happy man brushing. That makes more sense. <laughs> All right, here's the thing. Uh, in a, uh, let me ask you guys. Um, make some noise if you happen to believe in ESP psychic powers. All right. Make some noise if you don't believe in ESP. Now fight. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Uh, in addition to possessing bizarre, seemingly useless powers, it turns out that I am, in fact, the world's foremost mind reader. And to prove this, I've arranged a demonstration of my awesome, super colossal powers. Uh, so let's do this. Um, do me. I need for this. I need somebody who reads a whole bunch of books. Who out there reads a whole bunch of books? You do a lot of reading. What do you like to read? Fiction, that is a very narrow genre. S screw you, true things that happened. <laughs> I, just, I tell you what, I might want to use you for this experiment, but I got to make sure we're on the same psychic wavelength. So stand up right where you are. You don't have to go anywhere. Nice and loud so everyone in the room can hear. What is your name? Steven. That is correct. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen, even the most conservative estimates say there are a half million words in the English language. If you were to think of any word, and I predicted that exact word, we'd have something just short of a miracle on our hands, wouldn't we, Stephen? Stephen, I want you to think of any word in the entire English language. Do you have one? Excellent. Before the show even started, Stephen, I wrote on the back of this card a psychic prediction. Stephen, 
just to clear things up, do you happen to know what I've written on the back of this card? No? Ladies and gentlemen, no. <laughs> Correctly <laughs> predicted. <laughs> don't, don't, don't applaud, you'll just get more of that behavior. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I don't want to jip you. Steven, would you mind joining me up here on stage? Let's make some noise for Steven as he comes up there. Have a seat right there, everyone, Steven. Now, here's the problem, Steven. If we were to have you pick a word off the top of your head, it turns out it's only about 100, 150 words in the English language you're most likely to come up with. So I figure something that would be more fair would be if we picked a word at random from 100,000 possible words. So I grabbed three books everybody's heard of, if not read. First off, Stephen, some people like scary books, so I got Stephen King's The Shining. Stephen, have you read it? No. no. Did you see the movie? No. But you've heard of, uh... right, moving right along. <laughs> uh, some people like mysteries, so I got The Da Vinci Code by Dan Brown. Stephen? No. Did you, did you see the movie? No. Good for you, dodge the bullet. <laughs> and lastly, some people like fantasy, so I got my favorite Harry Potter book, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, Stephen? Yes. Okay, just to be clear, scary book not so much, mystery not so much, children's book you actually, yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> which of these three books do you want to use for our little experiment? Okay, now you're going for Harry Potter. I do want to be totally fair here and give you the chance once and only once to change your mind and go with either of the other two books. Do you want to change your mind? Are you sure? Yes. Because this is the only chance you get. Okay. Because tonight when you go to bed, I want you to be like, the damn magician gave me another chance. This is your only chance. <laughs> okay. All right, do me a favor. Riffle through the pages of that book. Make sure it really is a copy of Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, not some kind of tricky magic book. And while you're riffling through those pages, Stephen, I want you to stop on any page you want out of the entire book. Let me know once you find a page you like, but don't say which one it is. You got one? Yes. Excellent. Now, Stephen, I want you to let your eyes dance up and down that page till they land on big, fat, gigantic $3 word. Not a character name or a chapter heading. Those would be too easy to figure out. I want a big, meaty word that's going to stick in your mind. You got one? Uh, yes. Okay, remember that word. Close the book. Now, what we've done is about the fairest way I can think of to pick a word. 100,000 words. You pick the book. You pick the page. You pick the word. I'm going to try to figure out your word. And to help me out, Stephen, I want you to focus on the first letter of this word. And I want you to think of an animal that begins with the same letter as this word. You got one? Mm -hmm. All right, good. Focus on this animal, project it over here. Good. Good. <laughs> got it. Got it. For the first time, Stephen, what four-legged animal are you thinking of? Zebra. A zebra? A zebra. <laughs> Correctly <laughs> predicted. <laughs> It's not about the animal. It's about the word. Um, I'm gonna take a stab and try to salvage this. Uh, <laughs> all right, all right. Once and for all, Stephen, what word were you thinking of? Zestfulness. <laughs> Zestfulness. That's yeah, the exact word that popped into my mind as well. Do me a favor, I'm gonna need a couple of chairs for volunteers here. Here's the thing, what you guys are about to see, as far as I know, uh, what you guys are about to see, as far as I know, I am the only performer in the entire United States doing in a public show. However, it will be something very difficult to, for everyone to get a clear view of. So we need to elect two judges to come on stage and make sure everything I do is totally fair. I'm looking for the two loudest, most outrageous people in the entire freaking room. Point them out to me now, who am I looking for? Wait, Patrick Delahanty. No, he's working right now. Is it? Uh, actually, Lisa would be great. Let's get Lisa on up here. Hey, actually, I'm gonna get you. But yeah, that's what happens when you volunteer the wife. Come on up here. Uh, let me get Lisa over on this side, and you are Steve. Steve, Wait, excellent. Have a seat right here. You guys just have a seat. Here's the thing. People ask where I get the ideas for the weird stuff that I try. And about, uh, I don't know, seven years ago, I was at the University of Texas at Austin, which had a very big, very old library of magic books. And I found something written in the 19th century by the legendary magician Jean-Eugène Robert Houdin, a legend in magic. And it had a bunch of old magic crap I'd heard of, but it had one trick that blew my mind. It was like nothing I'd ever encountered. It was a trick that he thought was charming until he performed it for a real audience 
and it freaked him out so much that a woman fainted at the show. And he bolted from the gig without saying a word, declaring he would never again be caught at such tricks. Now, this is the performer who legitimized magic as a theater art. He's the guy that Houdini <laughs> named himself after. And this is the trick he only tried once. What was your name again? Steve. Steve, grab that mic out of that stand. Make sure it's turned on. I want you to hold the mic in your right yes, hand. Steve. Hold on your left. Hold out your left hand. Palm up. There you go. And I need you, Steve, to describe to the audience in as much detail as you possibly can what object is inside that little silver box. A pin. Right, using words. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's about how long? It's about a three quarters of an inch long. Right. And it's it's of, shiny. Right. It's chrome. The, the shape is... The shape is s round. Okay, <laughs> That's, we'll just call it a nail for short. That was okay, good, Steve. Yeah, yeah. All right, your job is to keep this flashlight pointed at the nail at all times. That way the folks in the back can at least catch a glimmer of what's going on. Okay. Your job, Steve, is to be the eyes for the folks in the back who can't quite see by describing in detail, play by play, every single thing I do, starting right now. He's licking the pen. That's very good, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> all right, here we go, here we go. Oh my God, no, he's not gonna do this. No, he's going to stick the pin through his eyelid. Oh, he stabbed it in his eye. Oh my God. All right, it's, all, it's all the way in, right? It's all the way in, keep yes, going, keep going. Keep going. Go. Oh my God. Describe. Am I, you don't want me to pass out, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's uh, rolling it around. Oh, uh, what is he doing? Oh my God. Oh, it's coming to the other eye. Oh my God. He's passed it through his navel cavity to the other eye. Did you say navel cavity? Yeah. <laughs> That's fine. Keep going. Okay. All right. Well, he's going to drop it into the cup, it appears. The yeah. glass. Oh, my God. That is disgusting, Brian. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I've never seen a pen pass through the navel cavity. <laughs> Naval Academy. All right, uh, that was pretty good. Let's see if we can take that one step farther. I'm gonna let you guys trade jobs here. You take that, you keep that pointed no. at the nail. Lisa, you describe no. everything. Here we go. Okay, he's taking a pin. That's right. And he's sticking it in his eye, and it's all the way in his eyelid. Okay, now he just blinks. All, right, all right, here we go, here we go. Okay, he's pushing it through his nose. <laughs> And then, I don't see anything. Oh okay, oh where'd it go? Oh. oh my god, ew, it's coming out. His, ew! It came out there we go, let's have a huge round of applause! Ew! Yeah. Oh, fantastic oh job! Oh my god, Thank you so that's much, disgusting! Thank you so much, Lisa, you guys are great! <laughs> By the way, if you guys missed it on stage, we got an instant replay for you of exactly what they saw up close and personal. All right, shh, we're doing a magic show, shh. So, so here's the thing, and by the way, Chad, um, uh, again, if, if I can get just more monitors, whatever you could throw me would be great. Uh, so here's the thing, uh, as much as I love doing the bizarre, freaky, magic kind of stuff, uh, the problem is that it pretty well limits me to only performing for adult age audiences, which don't get me wrong, I love you guys. You guys are far and away the smartest, th screw you kids. Uh, the, you guys are, are the smartest, the hippest, the most fun, and I thank you guys, but uh, if, since we do have some kids here and the kids seem to want some uh, kids magic, I, I decide I'm gonna branch out, and this, is, this one's kind of for the kids. It's not my usual style. Uh, I'm gonna try to branch out in a different direction. Chad, if you can mute my mic, I don't know if this one's working. Hey, uh, wait, 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 wait. Hello, hello. Magic. <laughs> All right, let, let me turn it down at the source here. That sounds delightful. Here we go. Check, 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 check. How are we sounding, Chad? You want me to turn that down? Yeah, much better. You want me to turn it down more? You're good. Am I? Okay, here, all right, here we go. Now, th this is not my usual style. I'm trying out a new thing. With any luck, they should let me cross over to the lucrative world of children's entertainment. I have a special friend. He lives inside this house. His name is Mr. Happy Pants. <laughs> now, Mr. Happy Pants is awfully shy. Just maybe we could get him to come visit. 
first we'll have to make him feel extra love. So I want all of you guys to say, hi, Mr. Happy Pants, on the count of three, just maybe he'll come visit. Ready, one, two, three. Greetings, children. For 4,000 years I've ruled the depths of hell. You shall know the name of fear, and that name shall be Mr. Happy Pants. Okay, can I put the show on pause? This entire stupid show, Mike TV has shouted, he's the devil, over and over and over again. And then this happens, and someone in the back goes, he is the devil. <laughs> well, I, I understand you're going to do some magic for us, Mr. Happy Pants. It is true. I shall summon forth my dark powers upon the stage so that you shall know the true meaning of evil. <laughs> I want to point out that the kids were actually cheering for evil. <laughs> I'm sorry, Padre. <laughs> Are you going to do that all by yourself, Mr. Happy Pants? No. I require a victim. I tribute. <laughs> <laughs> I volunteer as tribute. Nice. Uh, are, are you, uh, I'm, you know, the word is volunteer, Mr. Happy Pants. We, we say volunteer in magic. Bring me sacrifice now. All right, I need a girl for this. He likes Mr. Happy Pants likes girls. Some of you need to check gender again, and I don't want to scar a kid. Do, do, we have, do we have an adult female who wants to uh, I'll g I'll even give you some loot? Who are you pointing at? What do we got? Oh, yeah, no, you would be great. What was your name? Teresa. Teresa, let's have our Teresa! <laughs> Come on over there. That'll be your spot, Teresa. Let me get you to stand right here. That is you, Teresa, Mr. Happy Pants. Teresa is all yours. Teresa. So, Mr. Happy Bond. Your power is to resist the will of Mr. Happy Bond. Now, Teresa. Reach forward and touch the manly chest of Mr. Happy Man. No, no, I'm sorry. Okay, just, just feel his chest. Make sure there's no tricky. That's not his chest you're going for. That's, there you go. Yeah, that's... Well, I'm sure he appreciates it. Now he's with your very happy pants. That's, uh, no, just feel, it's my hand inside the puppet, right? Everything's completely the way it should be. Silence. Now, Teresa, reach into the box and remove the object from within. Excellent. Good job, Teresa. Let me grab that. There we go. Now, Mr. Happy Pants needs you, Teresa, to reach forward and point to the center of Mr. Happy Pants' chest, a place you could definitely feel flesh. Uh, again, not his chest. <laughs> Stuck on a theme. All right, I'm, I'm going to mark that spot right there. I want you to feel above, below, and all around that spot. Make sure you feel the palm of my hand all the way around. You feel it? Uh, check above, below. You feel all the way. In fact, check the back as well. Make sure make sure it's my palm all the way through. Everything checks out? Yeah. Everything feels good? Okay, there we go. Now, Mr. Happy Pants, it's time for your big children's magic <laughs> debut. Now, foolish children, you shall observe the incredible... Mr. Gabby Pants, feel the chest of Happy Pants, still feel flesh. Excellent. Now, Teresa, raise your hands above your head. All you lights, raise your hands above your head. All the way up, all the way up. And bow to Mr. Happy Pants. <laughs> All right.
right, that's enough. Let's have a huge round of applause for Teresa and Mr. Abby Vance. Hold on there, Teresa. Don't go away. You did such a good job, Teresa, that I'm going to give you a very special gift. You did so well that you get the very rare, very limited edition, very much sought after, I love Mr. Happy Pants t-shirt for joining us up here on stage. Let's hear it for Teresa. She did a great job. I don't know if we have time. I think we do have time for this. Uh, people always ask where I got the idea for the Happy Pants routine. And at first, I just had this vague notion of an evil puppet doing a kid's birthday party, which I thought was hilarious because I'm a jackass. <laughs> and, so, and so I bought the puppet in the distorter and I would like make stuff up improv for my friends, which they thought was hilarious because they were high. And so, and so the first time I ever performed it for an actual audience, and this is a totally true story, happened at a magic contest. I don't know if you know this, but magicians have these giant conventions where thousands of them all try to out wizard each other. It's sad, really. And so. I entered it in the comedy category, and I get on stage, and I don't know what got into me. I look out, there's 800 magicians, and they all look exactly the same. They're all exactly 68 years old. They're all out of shape. They're sporting the exact same creepy molestache. Uh, <laughs> and before I could think of it, yes, Justin Robert Young's mustache, as a matter of fact. <laughs> And so, before I can think about what I'm saying, Mr. Happy Pants, uh, he goes, I require a virgin. <laughs> and so I look out, and I'm like, oh, Mr. Happy Pants, that's not appropriate. I don't even know if there happens to be a virgin in the audience. And he says, oh, I'm sorry. I thought this was a magic convention. <laughs> I, uh, I didn't win. <laughs> All right, guys, at this point, I need the two biggest, hugest, tallest, strongest guys in the entire freaking room to join me up here on stage. I don't care who they are. You guys elect them for me. There we go. Here's one. Come on up here. Mike TV, get on up here. Everyone clap for Mike TV. Come on up. We need a friend for Mike TV. I'll tell you what. Hey, no, well, you, you're in, whether you want to be or not. Yeah, here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this out. In fact, actually, let's get, well, yep, yep, yep. Chick, 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 there we go. Justin, come on over here. Let's get Justin as the other guy. Justin Robert Young, Mike TV, come on over here. Justin Bieber Young! Mike TV! I never, I never, I never pegged Mike TV for the drunken heckler, that's amazing. <laughs> All right, here's, here's the game. Uh, Mike, I want you to do me a favor. Justin's familiar with this, but I want you to check this out. I'm gonna tell you a secret. Every time you've ever seen a magician escape from a straitjacket, they're cheating. Usually there's a secret handle deep inside the right-hand sleeve that they hold on to, so they maintain extra slack. After you strap them in, they let go of the handle, everything gets loose, comes off like a sweater. Anything like that in there? Check for uh, Velcro straps that can be pulled away to give extra slack. You wanna make sure there's no spandex or rubber or anything like that. Everything is canvas and leather. Just like the one you got at home. Straight jacket goes on from the front. If you come around to the back, you'll see there are three buckles at the back. Each of you guys start strapping me in. Uh, Mike, why don't you start at the top? Justin, you start at the middle. Work your way down. Keep in mind that how impressive this is in a moment will depend entirely on how cruel you guys are. So by all means, make sure to show absolutely no mercy, which at least Justin is not having any trouble with. Thank you. Bastard. All right. <laughs> For those of you guys, for those of you go, oh, Tiger, all right. For those of you guys who want to impress your friends at parties, you can buy tricky straight jackets that come from magic shops. This is not one of them. This is a real straight jacket that comes from the Humane Restraint Company out of Madison, Wisconsin. They're the world's largest supplier of prison grade humane restraints. And their catalog is freaking terrifying. <laughs> All right, feels like we got two of those done. I'll tell you what, it's, uh, I think Justin knows how to do that bottom one. Uh, Mike, let me get you over on this side. We'll have you grab the end of the sleeve. Make sure you grab the sleeve, not the strap. You're gonna step uh, straight to my right, parallel over there. There you go. And then Justin, we're gonna have you grab over on this side. We're gonna give you guys just a, a little bit of, hold on. It's almost as though you've never done this before. It's, a, it's almost as though you're drunk off your ass. <laughs> Happy New Year, people! <laughs> Mountain time zone, coming up in nine minutes. We gotta hustle. All right, here, grab the end of that. You guys pull apart. Let's get some tension. Okay, wait, wait, no, not a contest. <laughs> We're gonna cross over in front. You're going over top. You're under my right arm, ready? One, two, three. Go over top. There you go, back, 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 there you go. Okay, I've gotta get to the microphone. Hang on there, buddy. Take, take the long leather strap on my right arm. You're gonna thread it through that steel grommet on the left arm. You're gonna pull it back around. And here's the most important part. Uh, yeah, you gotta thread it. 
Well, you, well, you, you got to thread it before you start yanking. Otherwise, you just yank it for fun. <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> Once you have that threaded through, you guys, you guys, you guys work together here. Pull that thing to the uh, Mike. Give him a hand. Pull it to the tightest knot you guys can possibly free. Oh my god! <laughs> Are you sure about that? Oh, Jesus! I, I hate you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. All right, all right. Thread that, thread that through. Holy cow! Thread that through to the last notch, and then uh, thread that through so, so I don't slap myself silly. Now we get to the most important part. You guys can flip a coin to decide who gets to do it, but I need one of you. I'm on it. Okay, he's on it. <laughs> Just grab that cross strap, dangle it down there. Oh. Just die. Oh, oh, of course he gets Jeff. that job. Of course he gets that job. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> grab the boodle deedle do. Uh, thread it through. <laughs> and screw you. All right. All right. Uh, all right. Now grab this. Uh, Mike, if you can just grab it on the back swing. Yes, it's my time. <laughs> all right. he's, he's so excited. <laughs> all right. Uh, bad news. Uh, you might have to fish it out. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's uh, yeah. Pull it back around. You're going to thread it from my butt outwards. So that it's. Oh, yeah. Hold on, Tiger. <laughs> I want you to pull straight down. Don't yank, but you pull straight down as far as you can go. Go, go, go. Down's where the ground is. Go, 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 go. Oh, oh, my God. <laughs> Let's have a huge round of applause for both these. Wait, are you saying turn around? Yeah, it feels like a thong. Look at that. <laughs> it's, it's, the first, it's the first time people clap for my ass. Thank you. <laughs> All right, get out of here, both of you guys. You guys did a great job. Clap for these uh, jerks. <laughs> All right, folks. This is a regulation asylum issued straitjacket. They are outlawed in 26 of 50 states for being cruel and inhumane. Pretty, pretty sure we just found out why. <laughs> At the turn of the century, straitjackets were outlawed. In, or I'm sorry, uh, Houdini set the standard for straitjacket escapes by escaping from a real straitjacket in two minutes and seven seconds. Tonight, I'm going to try to beat that record and escape in under a flat two minutes. Nope. What do you mean, no? <laughs> what do you mean, no? no. Okay? <laughs> just, just press. You're killing the bit. You gotta press this, right there. Then, see, this is, and the joke is, you go like this. Uh, Okay, that was the wrong button. <laughs> All right, here we go. Wait for it. Ah, oh, shit. Uh, oh! 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 Okay, all right, here we go. Uh, not, not that one, the, the other red one. The other red one. And then I say, in a flat two minutes, and you go, no. And I go, no, Justin, stop it. You're counting down my time. I can't escape in time. You don't understand. I need two minutes. Does anyone want to see a leprechaun? <laughs> okay, seriously, you got Justin. You got to stop. I, I, that's that's as far as the thing can go. If anyone wants to hear Brian, shut up. No, seriously, seriously, I can't make it. I can't make it. Stop. Territory now. I did, it was funny, but now it's not funny. Okay, for real, listen. <laughs> <laughs> and this is actually no joke. I have, for the last six years, run a website that has chronicled all magicians around the world. I have never, in my tenure as an editor of a magic website ever, heard of anyone escaping from a straight jacket. <laughs> <laughs> Seven. 18, 17, 16. We're gonna count down from 10. Here we go. Stop, 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 st
right, here we go. Hold on. This is the big, this is a big finale countdown. Uh, oh, look, are you guys ready? Yeah. <laughs> Three guys. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Let's try that again. This is one minute, which I one minute and one second, which I can honestly say I've never done before. Are you guys ready? Yeah! Get set! Go!